Hello everyone, this is our um, chapter 11, Asymmetric Information. Um, so I'm going to introduce the subject matter and then I, I, I mean I will talk about some keywords which is important for this chapter and then uh, I will dive in, in details in the following um, uh, videos. So uh, the keywords, the two keywords uh, for this uh, intermediate microeconomics course um, that is important is one, the used cars or the lemons problem uh, by George Akerlof. So I'm going to talk about uh, a very simple model of his. Um, and then I will talk about the signaling problem of uh, Michael Spence. And in the signaling model, uh, I will talk about separating equilibrium and pooling equilibrium. So basically, those four keywords are the most important uh, part of this chapter. The honorable mentions, I will not um, describe any specific or formal models of uh, moral hazard and adverse selection problems, but I will in this video just briefly talk about what they are. All right, so the asymmetric information. Well, in the previous, well, um, in Intermediate Microeconomics 1, and at the beginning of Intermediate Microeconomics 2, well, not at the beginning, okay. So in Intermediate Microeconomics 1, we actually talk about perfectly competitive market, right? So the perfectly competitive market is where, um, you know, there are many buyers, many sellers, etc., etc. But more importantly, the information is assumed to be uh, uh, symmetric, meaning everyone knows all the information available to everyone else. Um, and then in this um, intermediate microeconomics too, we talked about the general equilibrium models, and then we we talked about the uh, the first uh, uh, fundamental theorem of welfare economics, which basically says under some minor sort of minor assumptions, the equilibrium outcome is pretty efficient. So here, one of the uh, minor assumption is in fact which we didn't uh, uh, explicitly uh, said but is, is the assumption is that the, this information is symmetric. So in fact, in intermediate microeconomics too, uh, since the beginning, the monopoly, uh, oligopoly, etc., we actually started talking about scenarios where the market outcome could be inefficient. Right? Now remember the monopoly causes dead weight loss, so it's basically inefficiency. Oligopoly, duopoly, I mean, when the competition is not perfect, but slightly different than monopoly, still have uh, uh, inefficiency. Uh, and then uh, we talked about the general equilibrium and said, uh, well, the equilibrium outcome will be efficient, yada, yada. But then we started talking about what if things are slightly different. For example, what if there is an externality? Um, well, then that causes inefficiency, remember? And then we talked about uh, uh, so the other sources of inefficiencies and, 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 and asymmetric information is another source of re or, or reason for in market inefficiency. All right. So what is asymmetric information? It means the information is not symmetric, meaning some agents know something that the, uh, the other agents don't. Okay. So once again, some agents know something that the other agents don't. All right, very, very roughly, this is what asymmetric information means. So, um, and it may actually cause the collapse of the market, uh, which is inefficient, uh, which we will talk about when we discuss the used car or the lemons problem. I'm not going to dive into uh, any details of signaling or, or the lemons problem. Let me just skip to the honorable mentions, the moral hazard and adverse selection. All right, so uh, let me skip to our honorable mentions because I'm not going to introduce any formal models of moral hazard and adverse selection in this uh, Intermediate Microeconomics 2 course. So I'll just mention what they are. And the best example is the insurance example. So uh, I'm going to uh, first talk about the adverse selection and then the moral hazard. So the insurance example is the perfect example. So. Um, let's say a car insurance. So you buy a new car and you need an insurance because you know that if you get into an accident, uh, car repair is very costly. Uh, it costs thousands of, you know, 10,000 or 20,000 dollars or whatever. 
So it's very high. And so you prefer to protect yourself through an insurance. Um, and the insurance, well, what happens is that here, the asymmetric information is about the type of the drivers. So let's suppose for simplicity, there are two types of drivers in the society, careful drivers and careless drivers. And as a driver, you know what type of driver you are. Let's say you know that you are a very careful driver. You don't speed, you follow the rules, uh, you don't play with your cell phone or anything else while you're driving, you don't text, and so you're a careful driver. On the other hand, there might be a careless drivers who they speed, they don't follow the rules, they text while they're driving or they do a bunch of other things while they're driving. So they don't uh, pay 100% there of uh, attention while they drive. And so the likelihood of them um, getting into an accident is much higher than the likelihood of me as a care careful driver getting into an accident. The thing is, the problem is the asymmetric information. As a driver, as an agent, you know your type, but the insurance company doesn't know you cannot distinguish. I mean, it's not really written on my forehead whether I'm a, I'm, I'm a good driver or a bad driver, right? Um, so the insurance company can't really say that. And let's suppose there's no history between me and the insurance company. So I'm a new customer to this insurance company. So the insurance company, uh, when they determine the premium, the price of the insurance, uh, they're going to make a guess. Uh, let's suppose they guess that 50% uh, of the population is a careful driver, 50% is a careless driver, and then they're going to make the or, or the, determine the price of the insurance uh, with this guess. And let's suppose they decide the insurance per premium is $1,000, let's say, all right, per year. Well, a careless driver is going to look at this $1,000 and say, oh, you know what? I mean, in the last few years, uh, in other, uh, with other insurers, I got into accidents and uh, it cost me more than $1,000. So $1,000 is a perfect deal. So I'm going to buy that insurance. So careless drivers will buy the insurance. As a careful driver, you're going to say, hey, you know what? In the last 10 years, I never got into an accident, not even a scratch. I'm a very careful driver. I don't even drive car, let's say. And $1,000 is way too much. I mean, if accident happens, which is going to happen like, I don't know, 0 0.0001 probability, obviously you can't know. Maybe while you're driving very carefully, some uh, uh, you know, intoxicated driver is going to come and hit you. You never know, obviously. But the thing is, you just say, well, I'm going to take that risk because I know I am driving very carefully. And so the likelihood of me getting into an accident is, is very low. Um, at least my history tells me that. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to pass $1,000 premium and I'm not going to buy it. So what happens, um, uh, the, the, the consumer self-select. So they adversely select. So the insurance company offers the insurance, but then only the or, or mostly the, 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 the careless drivers buy the insurance and careful drivers don't. So the insurance company will realize that next year because they're going to see that uh, almost all or maybe m I mean, most or almost all customers are getting into an accident. So they must be careless drivers. And so I am paying too much uh, money for, to cover their uh, sort of uh, accidents. So you know what? Um, apparently it's not 50-50, uh, at least the population that I am dealing with. And more than 50% are careless drivers. So I should increase, raise the premium price, the price of the, uh, the insurance. So it's rather than 1,000, they're gonna increase it to 2,000. Well, once the price is 2,000, again, uh, most of the careless drivers are probably gonna buy it, but careful drivers, more careful drivers will, will drop out. Or maybe the, the sort of, incredibly careless drivers will continue buying it and everybody else will not, all right? And so what happens is that, well, then the insurance company will realize that more and more of its customers are careless. And so they're gonna keep raising the, uh, the premium. And so this is, I'm sorry, this is exactly what we mean by adverse selection. So the, the asymmetric information causes um, some 
you know, estimated uh, a price and then the consumer self-select, uh, which hurts the insurance company. And so they keep increasing the uh, premium. And at the end, uh, either the entire system will fail or only a, a small group of careless drivers will buy the insurance and the insurance premium will be incredibly high. All right. So therefore, the insurance is not going to play its role, uh, the intended role. Well, what about the moral hazard? Well, moral hazard uh, occurs um, once the agents buy the insurance. So let's say you're a careful driver. For some reason, you happen to buy the insurance. OK, well, as a as a as a driver, you will say, well, you know what? I always obey the rules. I drive slowly. Uh, but you know what? I already have an insurance. So, you know, once in a while I can just speed um, because it's fun. So um, I'm covered. I have an insurance. And so let me be a bit more careless. So what happens is that sometimes the, 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 the insurance could change the behavior of the consumers. And so we call it moral hazard. And the problem is that the, 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 um, the, the insurance company usually doesn't have, may not have sort of tools to, you know, reward or punish those consumers who are uh, changing their behavior. In reality, they somewhat have power to change the consumer's behavior. How? For example, uh, accident forgiveness. So if you keep buying the, your insurance from the same insurance company, the insurance companies most of the times uh, promise you that they're going to discount your insurance premium, say 20-30% every year if you don't have any accident or if you don't have any claim. All right. So basically, if you do not change your behavior and if you continue to become a nice driver, I will reward you. And if you become a careless driver, I will punish you. All right. So there they try to minimize the moral hazard problem. And in order to minimize the adverse selection, what happens, for example, one policy is uh, the government enforces that everyone, whether you're careful, careless, doesn't matter, ma matter, but everyone must buy, you know, minimum level of insurance. And so if everyone must buy it, well, then uh, the, the, the agents do not have the opportunity of uh, self-select. So the careless, dr careful drivers are not going to say, oh, $1,000 is way too high, so I shouldn't buy the insurance. So they have to buy it. But obviously then this, 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 this price uh, has to be low enough so that the, uh, you know, the careful drivers are not getting worse off by having the insurance. All right. Um, so this is basically uh, the, the moral hazard and adverse selections are, you know, some of the problems caused by the asymmetric information. Uh, the other two, uh, I will talk about the lemons problem and the signaling, and, and I will uh, give a more detailed models in, in, the, in the next videos. Okay.